Hey, everybody. So, <laughs> so uh, sorry for switching it on you. So suddenly there, I, um, I'm still learning how to use the live function. And apparently, the live function that I had scheduled uh, apparently was not using my webcam. And so after much um, gnashing of teeth, <laughs> I had to cancel the other live that I had planned and hey, here we are live. So uh, so today I just, first of all, I wanna thank everybody for 14,000 subs. So that's reason to, uh, to be celebrating. Um, and you know, I'm gonna try to do these more often, having some, some live sessions just to cover some questions that I get that um, sometimes really aren't the best for like an episode, but are I think sometimes really helpful for people. And maybe if one person, usually the way I, I've always found it is that if that one person has a question, a bunch of other people probably have a similar question or maybe they can benefit from hearing somebody else's issues. Uh, so I'm going to go through some of the most recent uh, questions that I've been getting. And then there's some questions that I kind of get a lot of in stuff that's kind of in the same vein. Uh, but at the same time, it's not always the same question. And um, so I'll, I'll kind of cover some of that today, too. We're just going to hang out for a little bit of time. I was on the way to the gym. I OK, so what happened? <laughs> so what happened was I was headed to the gym got there. I was getting ready to get my pump on and uh, the gym was closed and they didn't open up until I had another meeting. And then after that meeting, I was like, oh yeah, I have this thing going on. So, so here I am. And after this, I'm going to be so energized that I'm going to go, uh, I guess, get my pump on. Uh, <laughs> but hey guys, so let's, let's kind of get into it. And let's talk about some of these questions. I get a lot of questions on Instagram. I get a lot of questions um, from, um, from the Facebook page. And then I also get a lot of people that go to midwesternmethod.com and ask me questions uh, about all kinds of cool stuff. So, uh, if you have questions today, I'll try to answer as many as I can. Um, and then what we're going to do is basically, I'm going to try to do these more often. So if you don't get your question answered today, um, and maybe just go ahead and find me on social media or find me on, uh, or find, go to midwesternmethod.com. You can, uh, you can email me from there. It goes directly to me. I'll see it. And then maybe I'll be able to answer it on one of my next coming, um, uh, YouTube lives. Um, also just a quick bit of information. I'm going to be on the key on Instagram live. Um, I'm doing a live session about cold training. So all the call, every question you have about cold training, and of course, this audience has probably some pretty awesome questions about cold training because, hey, guys, I mean, it's like I like to say, you're the right kind of weird, right? We're, we're, the, we're the right kind of weird. I, and so um, so if you have any questions on cold training, I'm going to try to try to do I'm going to answer some of those questions today in YouTube. But um, but also on Monday, August 3rd, and I think it's going to be around 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Um, that I'm going to be doing a live Q and A for Keon, and so I was really, actually, I was really, uh, really surprised and really, uh, really honored that Keon, uh, Ben Greenfield's uh, company, they they contacted me and asked me to be a, uh, a content uh, uh, expert for the Cold Thermo Challenge. So if you haven't signed up for the Cold Thermo Challenge, go to Keon on Instagram. And there's some instructions on how to do that. I think it's also on the website. I'm not 100 percent sure. Mike, if you're watching, you know, you, you, you want to throw some, some information down there, I'd be happy to, uh, to get more people involved in that because nothing, first of all, it's July here in the Midwest. Also, just so you know, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I don't have air conditioning working, right? So, so if, if, I, if I start sweating now, it's not because I've been working out, it's because it's summer and it's July in the Midwest and my air conditioner is not working right now. And so I'm waiting for a part to come in so they can fix the thing. So that's always a lot of fun. Um, actually, that will be, uh, I'm going to let that lead off the, one of the first questions. So I get this kind of question in a lot of different various ways. And it's kind of hard to think about, and maybe if you have a suggestion on how I could frame this for a YouTube video, go ahead and throw that up there. But 
it's kind of hard to think about how to make this into a YouTube video that someone would say, yeah, I, I see in the title what this means. And so, okay, so here's the question and I get it in a lot of variations. And essentially I, I got an email from, uh, it was, it was, there was this guy and his, his wife didn't want him to do cold training. And it was because, uh, she said he would always, he, he wouldn't be able to handle the heat because he'd get so used to cold that some, for some reason she believed that he would not be able to handle the heat. And I've, I've had this kind of question multiple times in multiple ways. Um, there's, there's the impression that whenever we're training in the cold, that somehow we no longer, I don't know, it's like we overcompensate, okay? So a lot of people have the impression that we will overcompensate in just everyday life. So, you know, I, I take an ice bath almost every single day. And if I, and in the, I tell you, I take an ice bath almost every single day. And in the summertime, especially, I never have warm water on me. Occasionally, I'll take a hot shower at night if I really want to get a, you know, if, I'm, if I need something to help me sleep, because that's really good to, to, to really uh, help you get some sleep, a hot shower before you go to bed. But most of the time, it's an ice bath before I go to bed. Um, and, I, and I've been doing this now since uh, like 2014. And let me tell you this. So, um, like I said, I have no air conditioning. The house is heating up and it's hot outside. The reality is that I feel that I am better adapted to the heat. Now it's not, I wouldn't necessarily say that's because I train in the cold. It's more or less because of maybe the combination of cold training, meditation, mindfulness, breath work, all these things. Essentially, um, the mantra that you're gonna hear me say and that you've probably heard Wim say uh, and you've heard a lot of other cold trainers and meditators say is that you surrender to the experience. And I, I've learned this in so many ways. Um, if you are experiencing anything that causes you struggle or strain, it's weird that the more you struggle against it, the stronger of a force it becomes on you. I learned this also from a friend of mine from Australia he was, uh, he came to Indiana. They don't really have a lot of cold weather there in Australia. Uh, hey, uh, hello mate to all my Australian friends. Um, but basically they, he, I, I brought him up. It was Indiana in like January or December. So everything was frozen over and he wanted to do some ice bathing. So we went out to Lake Eagle in, um, in Indianapolis. We had to cut holes in the ice, um, and it was just really awesome. And he was jet lagged like crazy. And he was, he was talking about how the best way for him to approach jet lag is just like we approach the ice bath, just to surrender to the experience. Don't try to fight it. Don't try to struggle. Don't try to caffeinate. And, and you know, just what we, a lot of times, a lot of us try to do and just try to relax into it. And, you know, ever since then, I've applied that to just about everything, including heat. So coming back to this question of will cold training make it so that you're just hot natured? No, it really isn't. Actually, in our brains, we have a homeostatic system. And this is one of those things where there's a lot of mis I think there's a lot of misunderstanding amongst cold trainers or just health enthusiasts in general. We look at our bodies a lot like it's a machine or a lot like it's something more logical maybe than, than what it really is. And what we, we forget that our bodies are, a, that's, our body is a living entity and it's governed by a, a lot of systems that seek homeostasis. So when it comes to temperature, you're actually trying to keep your body temperature is not so easy. It's not so easy to uh, change that. And that's why we have to do extreme things like extreme heat or extreme cold to challenge that aspect of ourselves. And the thing is, when you're in that ice bath, you're not actually, I mean, if you stay in long enough, yeah, your, your body temperature is going to go down. <laughs> but, um, but the thing is your, your brainstem kicks on and it, and it, and it activates, um, this basically all the systems that are in charge of keeping homeostasis. And so what it does is, uh, is it, it says, okay, we need to maintain this temperature, not too hot, it, not too cold, exactly homeostasis. That's what we're shooting for. So what do we need to do? Okay, well, we're going to start 
activating the, the metabolism. We're going to start burning calories. We're going to continue. We're going to vasoconstrict around the extremities, which is why when you feel the tingling and sort of the aching feeling around your fingers and that really, I, you know, the fingers for me is really the hardest part. A lot of people also have, they, they say their feet really hurt. Um, you know, my feet, I think it's because I go barefoot all the time. Um, I, they, they, they have really good circulation, but not everybody is, is, is like that. So, you know, but, but basically there's all sorts of things that happen that your body does to maintain homeostasis. It's not overcompensating by making you be hotter than you normally would. And when you get out of that cold, okay, it's going to, it's going to adjust and make adjustments, but it's shooting for homeostasis. It's, it's, it's never going to shoot for something hotter in anticipation of that cold. And it's the same way with heat. If you train in the heat, you, your, your body actually burns an enormous amount of calories and, and it expends an enormous amount of energy trying to reduce your body temperature. And regardless of if you do one or the other, or if you do both, the reality is that your body's always trying to shoot for homeostasis. So you're not going to throw yourself off kilter because you expose yourself to one or the other more often. What you will do, however, is you're going to give yourself a hormetic response. So you, your body becomes way better and your body and mind become way better at adjusting to meet those demands. And so whenever, for instance, if after years of cold training, for instance, whenever I get into an ice bath, um, you're, it, it's going to look completely different whenever you see me get into an ice bath versus if you've never taken one, it's your first time. And that's, that's another thing that you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of riffing here, but I, I want to, it brings up a good topic in, in that I think a lot of people kind of get awkward and they, they feel like that needs their, their experience needs to look like my experience. And it's just not like that. Like what's funny, what's really funny, uh, is, you know, um, the, it will vary. There's going to be sometimes whenever you're going to have a really easy experience in the ice. And sometimes whenever it's kind of challenging and, um, you know, it, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. There, I'm going to have a, a guest provided that I can still stay in this house. And I don't know when this house is going to turn into a workstation. I'm supposed to have an interview with my buddy, Chuck McGee, uh, tomorrow. And we're going to talk a little bit about our experiences in Poland and, and working with Wim Hof and a lot of that stuff. And it's funny because Chuck, um, you know, a lot, a lot of times he and I, when we see each other in the ice, it's one of those things where you kind of know, oh, OK, today is a harder day or oh, OK, man. Yeah. Wow. You've really been training hard at the end of the day. Coming back to the question so I can get on to the other questions. I'm sorry. You know, I ramble, you know, I ramble. that's why this is live. So it's okay that I'm rambling a little bit. Um, <laughs> but basically I will, I, I'm going to tell you, don't worry. If you, if you train in the heat or if you train in extreme cold, you're not going to throw your homeostatic systems off so that you're overcompensating the rest of the day. I'm going to go out and <clears throat> I do more, way more cold training than I do heat training. I'm going to go out into the heat. My body's going to be fine. Will I want some air conditioning? Sure. You know, because eventually you start stinking and, and no one wants to be around you. And, you know, I, I am married and I like my wife to <clears throat> not want to run away from me as soon as possible. But anyway, okay. So that's enough for that particular question. Let's see here. I've got a lot on Instagram here um, that I want to get to, but actually I'm seeing some pretty cool ones in here. Um, Let's see here. Let's let's go here. Let's go to this one. So I've got um, I've got one. This is a Wim Hof method question. I'm doing a little uh, Instagram here. It says hi Jesse. <clears throat> I'm doing Wim Hof method and ev everything is super fine on week two with all exercises and cold showers. But I broke my ribs. Uh, sorry to hear that, man. Um, I broke my ribs. And uh, let's see, some of this is kind of jumbled text. I still, I'm still trying to do the breathing. Instead of three rounds, plus the push-ups, plus the exercises, I do six rounds of breathing and 10 minutes of in the cold shower. Um, or ten, in, in 10 minutes, I'll be doing the, the, in a little bit, it looks like what he's trying to say is, very soon I'll be doing the 10 minute cold challenge. Okay, so, so guys, if you if you're a fan of the channel, you know I'm an English professor, so I'm never worry about when you're writing to me. It's there's always somebody who um, 
my students are, are, are grammar is very difficult for everybody. And, and I'm not trying to shame this person. It's just sort of hard to read. Uh, what do you think about showers without the exercises, just the breath work? So I, I, I've actually had this question a few times. I'm not going to make a YouTube channel video specifically about what happens if I break my ribs. But I have had multiple people come uh, with this type of question, especially the ribs, because of breathing, right? If you're breathing appropriately, if you're actually doing active breathing, super ventilation, Wim Hof method is, is a super ventilation method where you're, you're really activating all of your chest and all of your ribs. I mean, everything's moving. Well, yeah, it's really going to hurt. I, I broke my ribs when I was younger and I, I, it was back before I did Wim Hof method or any breath work or even knew those things existed. Um, and, but I always remember anytime I laughed, it was just awful. And I'm a guy who loves to laugh. So it was, it was a nightmare, but my recommendation for you. Okay. So for anybody who's experiencing broken ribs or any, any kind of a fracture in your breathing mechanism, especially the ribs, of course, but if you're, if you, or any injury within your breathing mechanism. So, so you've got a lot of different muscles that are involved. There is nothing wrong with taking time off from breathing, uh, from, well, from breath work. Okay. Obviously you're going to need to breathe, but there's nothing wrong with taking some time off from doing your breathing exercises so that you can repair. Um, the worst thing you want to do is exacerbate an injury in the efforts of, of trying to use, uh, you know, that time to, to do breath work. Um, I would highly recommend doing cold therapy for any kind of, any time you have an injury in general, uh, just especially to feel better, it's going to be a great alternative to things like ibuprofen or painkillers of that nature. Um, I'm going to be doing an episode pretty soon on the dangers of, of opioid pain medication. Um, but, um, but basically, it's a great way to activate things like norepinephrine, things um, that uh, are not habit forming, addictive um, or harmful, and that are accessible to you just as easy as getting into a shower. If, if, and I do coach some people who are in MMA and things like that, and that's typically the, the uh, advice that I give them. So, hey, John from South Africa, how's it going? Good to have you here. Let's see here. Um, all right, I've got another one here. So, okay, so he says, I have a question about the process of retention while doing the breathing. Okay, so this is about Wim Hof method. Sometimes I, I think people just assume Wim Hof method and and so there are a lot of other kinds of breathing techniques out there, guys. So, so, so try to, actually, okay, so he actually does say, I just started following Wim Hof method in March, okay. Um, as charismatic as Wim is, I, I have so appreciated your videos. Oh, hey man, thanks. And uh, they're, they're so educational and down to earth. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. Um, I, okay, so I have a question about the process of retention while doing the breathing. I find that if I do the retention with full lungs, my retention time is four to five and a half minutes. And I seem to go much deeper, lightheaded, tingling hands, feet, lose track of time, etc. Then if I do the retention with empty lungs. At some point when I am retaining with full lungs, I set the air out or I let the air out and then finish with 30 seconds or so with empty lungs, giving me the opportunity for a full inhale on the recovery breath. What is the reason or benefit of the retention with empty lungs? Okay. And uh, he says, if you haven't already addressed it in a video, uh, I must have missed it. And uh, I apologize. Well, no, no need to apologize. Okay, so let's go and talk about this, and then um, and then we'll take another question. So, so basically, with this one, and, and I th I've gotten this question a lot. Of, I think these are all really good that I'm going over because these are they're not typical questions. They're very specific questions, but I think we've all kind of had them, right? So, um, so when you do Wim Hof method breathing. We're, I would assume if you're watching my channel, you're pretty familiar with Wim Hof method breathing. You do super ventilation for a certain amount of time, certain number of breaths, and then there is a long breath hold. And during that breath hold, it is with a neutral lung. So not a full lung, it's with a neutral lung. And then after that, we do like a 10 to 15 second full lung apnea. And so, um, and so he says, okay, so he's been noticing that if he does, instead of his retention or his breath hold with a neutral lung, if he holds his breath 
then he can hold his breath longer. Well, okay, that's, that's going to be true. What you're doing right now is there's nothing wrong with it. Okay. So the, the issue here is that it, there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just that you're not at that point, you're not doing Wim Hof method protocol. You've created your own. And what you're doing is sort of similar to, I mean, there's, um, to, there are certain protocols that are a lot like that for activating. So there it's basically an activation technique. It's also something that, uh, yeah, you're, you're more likely to have dizziness. Um, a lot of the more, like when you say going deep, those types of experiences, when you do that, the issue is that when you're doing that kind of a breath retention. So if, if you're doing a breath retention with a full lung, as opposed to a neutral lung, there is a difference in how the gas exchange is going to occur in your lungs. So when you have a full lung, to put it, to put it really simply so that I, just to make it really clear, when you have an, a neutral lung, so not totally empty because of course we can't, it's, it's nearly impossible to have a totally empty lung, but, but neutral is okay. And then I, I still have a little bit of breath in my lung. When you do that, what you're, what you're doing is your gas exchange is going to be focused on the buildup of carbon dioxide. It's going to be slow and your oxygen levels actually will decline into areas where they normally can't. When you do a full lung, it's going to be similar. But since you've provided more gas, that gas exchange takes longer to happen. And typically what we see is that you're, you're not going to get the same respiratory um, stressor. So when it comes to building, uh, when it comes to getting the low oxygen benefits, the, the benefits of low oxygen training, hypoxic training, it's going to be better with a, with a neutral lung than a full lung, just because of the pressure and uh, what's the best way to put this specifically because you're not providing your lung with a whole lot more oxygen. So it's, it's more focused on building up that carbon dioxide and creating a, an, a deficit in oxygen. When you, when you do the recovery breath, there's a whole uh, really fast, uh, gas exchange that happens there and it's pressurized. So, and then it gets you ready for the next round. So what you're doing isn't really wrong. And if you, if that's something that you want to do, that's fine. It's just going to give you a slightly different, um, effect. One of the things you're also probably going to notice is a stronger sympathetic trigger. So a stronger fight or flight trigger, as opposed to whenever we do the breath hold with a neutral lung, we get a very strong parasympathetic trigger. So what that means is you get a, when, and this is one of the things I think we've, I'll, I'll, we've noticed if you've, tr if you practice Wim Hof method, when you're in the retention, you get incredibly relaxed. You, you, you really are in a state of complete relaxation and a neutral lung. Um, uh, I've, I'm writing a book on this and I actually have the term in the book, but because but because I'm, I'm live, I've forgotten the term that I'm wanting to use. But essentially, the term, whenever we're in a neutral lung, that, is, that should be the state of absolutely zero muscles firing. You're completely relaxed. You're not struggling. You're just literally just lying there or sitting there. If you're, if you're lying there, you're, you're completely relaxed. As opposed to your tensing muscles whenever you have a full lung. So you get an incredibly strong parasympathetic trigger when you do a, a retention with a neutral lung, as opposed to a, a sympathetic trigger whenever you do a full lung. Okay, hopefully that helps. It's not like you're doing something wrong. It's just that it's just different and different isn't always wrong and different doesn't mean it's bad. So let's see here. All right, let's see. I've got, uh, I just got one. Let's see here. Well, that one, that one has some languages in it. Let's see here. Um, okay, quick question. I've been doing ice baths. 
Okay, so this person says, I've been doing ice baths slash church. I'm not sure what that means. But okay, so let's see. I've been, maybe you go to church after you take an ice bath. And making it epic with God. Oh, you're trying to make it like, a, like an ice bath church kind of an, uh, a feeling maybe. And making it epic with gongs and flowers and whatnot. Cool, man. Um, can we use bath salts too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I Now, okay, so obviously we're not talking about like the drugs <laughs> but uh, I, I, I would discourage you from doing anything that's going to, uh, to uh, make you forget what it's like to be a human being. But, um, but bath salts, as far as like Epsom salts, magnesium based salts, I love that. In fact, in my, um, in my deep freeze, freeze uh, cold plunge that I have in my garage, I have like one and a half bags of just Epsom salts. I always use it. And that's for a few reasons. One, it, it helps me uh, prevent a lot of buildup of ice around the sides, even though it's going to happen. Uh, but also, hey, why not get the benefits of, of ice bath uh, and and uh, magnesium salts in the same at the same time? That's just a lot of it's just awesome. Plus, the wife likes it when I smell like like lavender or whatever the you know the scent is. So nothing wrong with that either. Um, I'm coming in all all smelling good, feeling good. Um, are there any restrictions that you would recommend when it comes to, I, when it comes to bath salts, the only restriction, I mean, not really, I would say use how much ever you want, use, uh, whatever scent that you would like. Um, when it comes to using salt in an ice bath, I think sometimes, um, I get certain questions about this. I'm okay. So let's talk about that. So sometimes people will ask me about, should I put it in the ice bath? Is it going to make it colder? Is it going to make the ice bath any colder? Well, it's not necessarily going to make the ice bath colder, but it makes it so that um, it can get colder. So I, in a way, yes, it's always going to depend on how much ice you have in the ice bath or how cold the water is in general, right? So for instance, in my freezer, it's going to be really cold because I've left my freezer on for a long time and I get, you know, I get uh, a lot of ice around the side, so I have to let it kind of thaw out and then I get more ice around the sides. It's really kind of cool that there's a difference between the way the ice in my deep freeze sounds versus how like an ice bath with, with uh, cubed ice sounds. So I can always tell the difference whenever I get in. He says, I'm up to nine minutes and then I get out and do movement. Uh, let's see. And then hot tub, but I'm, but I'm cold the next day. Okay, so this is another thing I get a lot of times. People, it's kind of weird. I don't know if there's clouds. I don't have any lights on in the house either. So it's very spooky. All right. But he says, okay, so I've, I've gotten a lot of people that talk about being cold the next day or they just can't get warm, things like that. So he, so here's here's the way he is saying this. Uh, he or she. So I, I, I'm sorry. You know what? I think this is a she. So I apologize. Um Anyway, the point is, she says, uh, uh, also, I'm up to nine minutes, and then I get out and do movement, then hot tub, but I'm cold the next day. Is that because um, she references a, a Chinese medicine uh, concept? Uh, and she says, how do we know when we're hitting our limit when it comes to time? Uh, I want to be able to sit peacefully, but I don't want to overdo it. I'm enjoying them more and more when it comes to ice bathing. Cool. Well, thank you so much for that. So let's talk a little bit about being cold the next day. And uh, let's see here and how to know your limits. Now, first of all, okay, shameless plug, but it's, it's, I'm, I did write the training manual. So there's an ebook that I wrote called a practical guide to cold training. And literally the reason I, I wrote it was specifically so that you can take step-by-step step, and it's only 25 bucks and it's step-by-step step how to go from your first cold shower to ice bathing to cold uh like outdoors walking like barefoot in snow i'm actually going to be coming out with the new revised version uh the second edition uh i'm going to be releasing that in september for all of those of you who have already bought it you're going to get the second edition for free as soon as i upload it uh it'll go in there right now i'm in the editing phase i'm editing two books right now um, but basically, uh, there is a reason why I wrote the book and that's literally to take anybody from wherever it is you are step-by-step step, 
to where it, wherever it is you'd like to be when it comes to cold training. Now, for the sake of, of just answering this question, I notice that she says she's up to nine minutes um, in, in a uh, ice bath. Now she's got awesome stuff going on here, gongs and flowers and, and oh man, this is really cool. Um, now, when it comes to nine minutes in an ice bath, I don't, I, there's a few things I don't know. First of all, I don't know how cold this ice bath is getting. And uh, I don't know how well trained uh, or how long or, or how she got up to this point. So those are the things that I normally want to know if I'm going to coach a person. But I would say nine, nine minutes is a long time to be in an ice bath if it's super, super cold. Um, it's not that long to be in an ice bath. For instance, if you're an athlete, you probably remember taking an athletic ice bath. And those ice baths are usually around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is where I am so sorry, everyone else that's not in the United States. Gosh, I was getting really good at Celsius in January when I was in Poland. Man, everything, I, I was just like, yeah, that's Celsius. Um, and so now I, uh, <laughs> I'm really bad at it. But 60 degrees Fahrenheit, let's see what that is real quick. 60 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius. So fifth, about 15 degrees Celsius. That's what a athletic ice bath typically is. And for those of you who are Wim Hoffers or really into intense cold, you're saying, hey, man, that's not very cold at all. And that's true. Um, a typical ice bath that I'm going to get into is going to be around, um, is going to be as close to freezing as possible. Mine are usually 40 degrees Celsius or 40 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius. Oh, that's four degrees. Let's see. 40 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius. Which is about four degrees, <clears throat> about four degrees Celsius. So I'm looking at that is is a typical um, ice bath that I'll take on a daily basis. Sometimes I've got it down to about thirty degrees, uh, which is below freezing, but I've got the ice in there. So it just depends on how long I leave the ice uh, machine on. Let's see what I have here. I've got some questions. Um, let's see. Um, would there be any benefits in doing the Wim Hof method in extreme heat? because I know Wim walked 20 or so miles in the desert. Great, great question. Pete the Iceman. Hey, I love the name. Um, so, so that's a great question. So first of all, there are benefits to heat training. So peat training, uh, heat training, not peat training, heat training is incredibly beneficial. I do it. I, I have a, a steam room in the gym that I go to. And before COVID hit, I was able to use it a lot. They've closed it now. So Yay. But anyway, uh, heat training is, is fantastic. There's all kinds of benefits. Um, the issue is, uh, I guess the question where it, it comes out, are there any benefits of doing Wim Hof method in extreme heat? So I'm assuming the question has to do with, are there benefits of doing Wim Hof method breathing in extreme heat? So not, not really. Um, there's really no specific benefits other than uh, what you would get if you did the, the Wim Hof method technique, the breathing technique in like room temperature. And then at a later time in the day, you did um, a heat uh, exposure like in a sauna or a steam room. However, um, now I will say this, one of the things that I've experienced, I've done, of course, you know, I'm always out there doing stupid, crazy things, right? So, um, and this is why my wife is, has a hard time taking me places, but uh, I was in a resort one time and they had a really nice uh, sauna and I, I did do Wim Hof method breathing in the sauna and it's awful. <laughs> and that, that air is very arid. Uh, it's very dry. It's very hot. And so if you are going to do any kind of deep breathing in a sauna, definitely do it through your nose. Don't uh, uh, like I found it really quickly that it was just not very palatable to me to do it uh, with mouth breathing. I've also done it in a steam room. Again, through your nose, not through the mouth. Uh, you can really irritate some stuff down there. Nasal breathing is so, so important, um, especially whenever uh, you're, you're in, a con in conditions where you're, the air is not ideal or close to ideal for those poor little alveoli in your lungs to pick it up. Let's see here. I want to look at maybe I had some other, some older ones, some earlier ones. If you guys have stuck around, I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Um, uh, Hey, Mike T hang in there, my friend. Um, yeah. Continue to do breath work, uh, relax. 
drink lots of fluids, take your vitamins uh, and eat well, just try to sleep a lot um, and uh, check back in. Yeah. Let me know how you're doing. I, I, you know, just go to my website. I'd love to hear uh, how, how everything worked out. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Carlin. Yes. Colorado. I actually trained with Wim um, the second and probably the most intense training where he was actually training me was in Colorado, the, the Rocky mountains. And, um, I, I, I'm writing my, I'm about to publish this book on breath work and I am in the editing and revising part where it's almost ready to go to where I have to have it. I can't touch it anymore. And I have stories about, I have some stories about training with Wim in Colorado. It's not really that, it's kind of one of those things where I'm like, is, is it off topic for the book? Cause it's focusing just on all the different variations of breath work. I kind of, I, a lot of my friends say, no, I seriously want to put it in there. Um, I think I'll probably put it in and I'll just put a little asterisk. If you want to skip some of my anecdotes about training with Wim in the mountains, you can do so. Let's see here. Um, let's see. Let's see. Officially lost. Oh my God. Uh, have you ever experienced chest pain from stress or work? How can I use Wim Hof method to fix this? Been a long time follower. Thanks. Awesome. Well, I guess not awesome if you're experiencing chest pain. So, um, yeah, well, the thing is, there's a few different reasons why you might be experiencing chest pains. And of course, obviously this is the part where I'm going to say, check with your doctor, make sure it's nothing serious. Make sure it's just, you know, there are a lot of different things. One time I had, I probably more than one time <laughs> I've had acid reflux so bad that I thought I was having some kind of a coronary. Um, I, I don't know. It's, it's the story. I've been eating wings, like chicken wings more since I don't have the long beard anymore. And as it comes out, I have to clean up my diet because I can't do the sauces. Um, but, but on this more serious note, uh, officially lost. Um, yeah, this is, I mean, having chest tension and, and discomfort, um, it, it goes hand in hand with stress and we're living in a world right now where, um, man, yeah, we're, th this is a stressful time in history and we're more separated now than ever before. You know, um, I would love it. I would love it. Like right now we've got what, 30, 30 some people on this, uh, live right now. It would be so cool if we could all be physically present. And that's specifically because there's a vagal response when you see someone else in person. That in, so, so your vagus nerve is, is constantly trying to either relax you or tell you to uh, get into a fight or flight state. So, um, so obviously we, we try to use the vagal, you know, vagal, some vagal responses for relaxation. Uh, one of the things that we don't get to see very often is other people smile because of all this stuff. So, you know, there's all kinds of, there's all kinds of stressors. Um, but when it comes to how to use Wim Hof method, here is the, I guess it's Wim Hof method, breath work, cold exposure. You know, for me, Wim Hof method was, I, I, I always call it my gateway drug because it got me into it, you know, because Wim Hof method is this beautiful combination of, of, of just awesome breath work and, and, a, and really great cold exposure. And then it opened up all these different worlds of, that are out there. But here's what I would say. First of all, Wim Hof method is an interrupter. And so I go into a little bit more detail in my book, um, but just to let you know, okay, so an interrupter is something that I, I, I look for when it comes to state. So there are certain times whenever we get into, we get stuck in these, these feedback loops of stress, anxiety, just really, um, you know, sometimes in, in the States, we call it a funk. You know, we get into these feedback loops and it can cause us to have um, psychosomatic symptoms, you know, and, and there's, I forget the name of the book. Uh, of course my mind keeps going blank, but, um, there are some people that manifest pain in like joints, muscles, and it has nothing to do with a physical injury. It, it's a psychological thing where it's, that's where you put your stress. And so when it comes down to Wim Hof method, the thing about Wim Hof method is that it is a forced meditation, both the breath work and the cold exposure. And it, and I, I, I use the, the, the term interrupter because 
whenever you do the Wim Hof method breathing, if you're really focused on the breathing, you're really getting into it, it's nearly impossible to sustain the stressed state past that interrupter, right? I'm stressed, I'm stressed, I'm stressed. Wim Hof method style breathing. And then after that, oh, I can pick it back up, right? Because we have free will, we can say, well, I think I'd like to think about my stress and maybe life is still stressful, but we at least have an interrupter to help prevent that stress from growing out of hand. Um, actually, when we do Wim Hof method style breathing, we silence the neocortex in our brain, which is the problem solving, um, you know, the language center. It's, it's the part of our brain that we get stuck in so often. The part of our brain that we talk about, like when, when we're just stressed and there's chatter, I can't turn my brain off. Right. And that is due to, well, it's most specifically the dopamine feedback loop. Um, but we need something to break that because uh, if you don't do something, it'll just keep going on and persist. And so what Wim Hof method breath work, what, um, cold exposure, what they do what Wim Hof method does is that it is an interrupter. It breaks that ability to continue to be in that link, uh, that, that, that feedback loop, at least for an, a, a certain given amount of time. Will those worries come back? Will the world still be a crazy place to live? Of course, but at least for this amount of time, I can break the tension and, and hopefully, in, in my experience, what it what it does is it breaks from escalation. So maybe I'm getting more and more stress, more and more stress, more and more stress. I do Wim Hof method style breathing or I, or I do a, a cold exposure of some kind and then the stress level goes back to maybe a, a base level again and then you know maybe it'll, it'll eventually kind of grow and grow and grow, but I have a tool to use to it to address it and to keep it from getting out of hand all right so we're almost done i'm gonna to have to go get my pump on here in just a minute but i want to invite um i want to invite you guys to uh to watch first of all i'm uh, i'm going to be interviewing chuck mcgee he and i are good buddies we uh we were roommates we're always it always seems like every time we work together we're roommates um and so we're going to talk about training with whim working with whim working in, and uh, he, he works at pain clinics and he uses Wim Hof method and Butico breathing uh, to help um, uh, patients with, with chronic pain. So he's a great friend of mine and, uh, and just really a hilarious guy. He's, he's a Wim Hof method instructor. He's a oxygen advantage instructor and he is a stand up comedian as well. Like literally does stand up. So pretty awesome. Let's see here. Um, one more question. What temperature do you keep your ice plunge at and what is your typical time in the water? So, um, I, so here's something kind of interesting. Um, my ice plunge is typically going to be somewhere between 35 and 45 degrees. I moved recently. And so in my old house, I could, I, I was able to do a timer. And for some reason I, I have yet to solve this problem. The timer won't fit in like, it'll, the way that the plugin is set up, I can't do the timer anymore. So what I've been doing is just like, I'll leave it plugged in overnight or I'll leave, you know, or I'll put a timer on my phone and it's kept it around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, typical time. Now here's where it's different. I don't time myself in the ice anymore. And I don't recommend that at first. I think it's, I think it's a good idea at first to use some time limits to say, okay, while I'm still learning how to listen to my inner voice, um, while I'm still learning interception, I need to have these, these time markers. But after a while, you start to learn to listen to your inner voice. And so, you know, what I'll do, and I, I'm just guesstimating right now, because what I do is I'll, I'll listen to some of my favorite music. And when it comes to favorite music, it's going to change. Some days I'll be listening to like Viking music. Other days I'll be listening to you know, I love the Beastie Boys. Like, I really love the Beastie Boys, so I'll listen to some of them. Um, I'll listen to, like, uh, cheesy rock songs. And then sometimes I'm like, no, nope, dude, I'm going to listen to something, like, super cerebral. Um, but I – I uh, sometimes I'll make it all the way through a seven-minute song. Other times I won't. You know, sometimes I'll put a Tool song on. 
and I'll make it all the way through. Um, and then other times I won't. Um, really, I would say I always, I'm always doing at least a couple minutes and then, you know, sometimes five, sometimes seven. It really has more to do with listening to that inner voice. That's something I talk about in my ebook. And it's something that as a person, as you progress, that's kind of, that really is one of the main goals of, of a lot of this stuff is to learn to listen to yourself. So, you know, I would say between two and seven minutes a day, and I know that's a huge swing and I'm sorry about that. I, when I was training, when I was really training hard, I would be in there at least 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes straight. And then I would sometimes do other things uh, throughout the day. Um, so uh, I, but, you know, I'm not trying to break any world records, you know, I'm not trying to do anything like that. So I'm just trying to, what it, eventually you find out exactly what makes you feel good and you kind of stay with that. And that's what I recommend, whether it's long time or not a long time, it doesn't make a huge difference. It's just kind of the, uh, where, where, wherever it is you stand with your inner voice. Anyway, guys, um, we've done about 45 minutes and it's been a lot of fun actually. So I want to thank you guys for your, um, uh, for your, uh, attention and for, for sticking with me, 14,000 subscribers. So I'm really excited. Um, I've got some really cool stuff coming up and, um, I want to invite you to do the key on thermal challenge and I, I'm going to be doing a Q and a on Instagram on Keon's Instagram. So that's K I O N. Uh, I'm going to be doing their Instagram, uh, a, a Q and a about cold, um, cold training. So it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun and Hey, Mike, thanks for sticking with me this, uh, this whole time. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun and we're going to be talking about cold training. Um, and you guys really should do the cold challenge because you're already probably doing cold exposures anyway. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, also, uh, again, I'll be doing an interview with Chuck McGee soon. Um, check out my Patreon page. And if, for those of you who are in my Patreon page, um, basically every month I, I give you guys new guided breath work sessions. So, uh, we've done Wim Hof method. We've done, um, what I would consider a Midwestern method style breath work, where I, I combine a lot of different breathing techniques for a specific purpose. Um, and, uh, they're just, we got stuff to, to amp you up, to calm you down, to make you feel awesome, to blow your mind, this and that. So uh, if you haven't joined the Patreon group, uh, I would highly recommend it. Take a look on the uh, landing page and there's a little P there and it goes to the Patreon group. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, and uh, we'll try to do this more often. So feel free to send me some more questions. I know I didn't get to everybody. So maybe on the next, uh, on the next go round, we'll do it again and I'll, I'll answer those questions. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. And you know what I'm going to ask you to do. <laughs> you know it. And I, and I really hope you do go out there and, and show kindness to everybody you see, everybody you see, just remember we're all in that same big family and we're all, you know, we're all trying to do the best we can. So, so go show some kindness uh, to everybody that you see. And until next time, guys, thanks so much and um, be kind. <laughs>